Worldwide the generation mix within all power systems is in the middle of a dramatic transition. A general process of decarbonization and phasing out of nuclear power plants takes place. The related classical generation of electricity is based on large turbo or hydro generator sets that, by their physical characteristics and without any further investment, make for a significant amount of inertia in the power system. That means, immediately after a loss of a significant part of power generation due to e.g. forced unit outages, the resulting system frequency drop is delayed by the inertia of overall rotating masses. This is of paramount importance, because a few seconds elapse before additional power reserves can be deployed to re-establish the power system equilibrium while remaining within acceptable frequency deviation limits. Renewable generation is mainly based on PV or wind power in feed which is connected to the grid through power electronic interfaces and delivers, therefore, in principle no additional inertia to the power system. Consequently, the concern is that the resulting rate of change of the frequency ROCOF will increase to that extent that system security will be endangered. The response time of active power reserve activation or even emergency protection will be not fast enough anymore to stabilize the system. The inverter-based generation is only one element of a complex mosaic. Looking at figure we can move from left and list four elements with a high impact on the electrical power systems, the extension of grids, that increases the complexity of inter-area oscillations behavior, the weather phenomena, more and more violent, that stress the electrical power system, the large power flows from periphery to the center of grids, the market effects that create strong transients during change of the hours. In addition, we have to consider also the change of load behavior, due to large diffusion of inverters, and also of the load control, all these elements, jointly with inertia decrease, raise the ROCOF absolute amplitude, on the one hand, and worsen, on the other hand, the frequency behavior and damping of inter-area oscillations. Bulk power system continues to transition towards higher penetrations of inverter-based energy resources, power system synchronous inertia started decreasing throughout most of the utilities system. TSOs are taking prudent steps to ensure that frequency does not reach under frequency load shedding UFLS levels for large unplanned losses of generation. A high initial rate of change of frequency rokoff caused by decreasing system inertia in an interconnection drives the need for faster energy in injection to arrest declining frequency. Faults in generator tripping occur randomly by nature and so cannot be predicted in advance. Nevertheless, based on historical data, the approximate number of high rokoff events can be estimated. Frequency control has conventionally been separated into three categories, primary, secondary, and tertiary control. The frequency of the system will change, if generation exceeds demand, then the frequency will rise, if demand exceeds generation, then the frequency will fall. The size of a frequency deviation is proportional to the size of the mismatch between generation and demand, bigger mismatches lead to bigger and faster deviations. Transient frequency deviations outside of steady-state frequency limits only occur if a sufficiently large generation or large demand loss happens over very short timescales. Above figure is very important to understand, system operator need to understand different times frames, this is crunch of the story, arresting period, recovery period, and post-recovery period. Energy stored in rotating masses of all machines synchronized with the grid is naturally extracted, resulting in a decline of machine speed i.e., inertial response that manifests as a change in system frequency. After some time, power injection and withdrawal balance in system frequency reaches its lowest point. This is referred to as the frequency nadir. The time frame leading up to the nadir is referred to as the arresting period. During this period and the subsequent recovery period, synchronous generator turbine governors and inverter-based resource active power frequency control systems begin responding to the deviation of system frequency by increasing active power output. At some point, the system will return to nominal frequency in the post-recovery period due to primary frequency response combined with secondary frequency controls i.e. automatic generation control. This type of fast-acting response to changing frequency is considered fast frequency response FFR, and FFR is increasingly recognized to be an essential reliability service ERS for reliable operation of the BPS. Several number of factors determine the rokoff following a sudden imbalance between generation and load, and these factors cannot be considered in isolation without accounting for the others. Immediately following a large imbalance in generation and load, the initial rokoff is driven by the following factors, the size of the contingency I.E., loss of generation or loss of imported power from DC tie lines from other interconnections, overall system inertia of synchronously connected machines, including generation and motor loads, speed of response and magnitude of energy injection provided by generation in response to the observed deviation in frequency, speed of response and magnitude of load tripping or load response to the observed deviation in frequency, 
The sensitivity of loads to changes in system frequency, incremental losses on the BPS due to changes in system flows ca caused by the loss of generation. While load sensitivity and incremental losses play a role in overall frequency response, the initial rokoff is dominated by the size of the contingency event, the amount of online system inertia, and the speed and magnitude of frequency response. Rate of change of frequency rokoff, this measure of how quickly frequency changes following a sudden imbalance between generation and load. Rokoff is most commonly expressed in hertz per second. Rokoff is fundamentally the tangential line for any given point on a frequency response curve, however, this is typically estimated by using two frequency measurements within a short period of time i.e., 0.1 to 0.5 seconds. The initial Rokoff is most commonly calculated as the change in frequency over a 0.5 second time period immediately following a sudden generation loss. This time period is selected since the BPS response during this time is dominated by the size of the contingency and the system inertial response 18 prior to the majority of turbine governors responding to the change in perceived frequency. Inertia is a measure of the stored energy in a system. This stored energy helps to resist and slow down changes in the frequency. The amount of inertia on the electricity transmission system depends on the level of demand and on the generation mix that is meeting that demand. All AC connected synchronous generation has some level of inertia associated with it, from the rotating machinery that is producing the electricity. This includes biomass, CCGTs, coal, hydro, nuclear, and pump storage. Other types of generation, connected through converters, traditionally do not have inertia associated with them. This includes renewables like wind and solar, solar, and HVDC interconnectors to other countries. Renewable generation is often at the top of the merit order to run, due to environmental incentives, and interconnector imports are expected when the price in other markets is lower. Traditionally increases the inertia of the system by running synchronous units balancing mechanism unit, BMUs which provide inertia that would otherwise not be running. Each BMU comes with a different amount of inertia, set by its electromechanical properties, a different amount of energy, a different price for the energy, set by its offer price by that utility, size of largest credible contingency, typically, the largest credible contingency remains fixed unless a larger unit is installed or the largest generating unit retires. In many cases, the largest credible contingency involves a loss of a combination of generating units or large transmission tie line. Speed of frequency response, any energy injected prior to reaching the frequency nadir will reduce the size of the frequency deviation and improve the frequency nadir. See how Rokoff increases for decreasing system inertia for a defined contingency. At some point, high Rokoff poses challenges to maintaining system frequency within acceptable limits i.e., avoiding load shedding or cascading events since there is insufficient time for resources generation or load to respond to frequency deviations. This is particularly a concern in areas where the instantaneous penetration levels of inverter-based resources, both DERS and BPS-connected inverter-based resources, reaches significantly high levels. Figure illustrates the impact that contingency size has on Rokoff at different system inertia levels. As described above, Rokoff will increase in absolute value more negative, faster Rokoff as system inertia declines assuming no other changes. However, as the size of the largest contingency relative to system load decreases, frequency performance as measured by the nadir drastically improves. The red and blue lines show systems with effective system inertia of 4.0 and 3.0, respectively, and the change in Rokoff for varying generation loss events. Overall system frequency response should fundamentally be sustained such that sufficient amounts of energy are injected to arrest frequency excursions, maintain frequency stability, and adequately allow frequency recovery back to nominal following a sudden loss of generation or load. However, there are different types of frequency response, including both PFR and FFR, that can work in coordination to support frequency control. Fast frequency response, power injected to or absorbed from the grid in response to changes in measured or observed frequency during the arresting phase of a frequency excursion event to improve the frequency nadir or initial rate of change of frequency. Any utility going for FFR they may include the following considerations, magnitude of response, speed of response i.e., response time, type of control, sustaining time, availability, and repeatability of response. Figure shows the response of a GEWTG to an under-frequency condition while operating in different modes. Note that the fastest response times come from the inertia-based FFR feature. Combining this feature with curtailed operation to provide sustained response offers the fastest response while also maintaining that response. 